Hey, this is Ian from the Malaysian Nomad. Um, it's uh, coming to the end of my visit here in Cartagena in Colombia. Well, we've been here for the past two months and it's been really wonderful. You know, one of the things that we've been talking about as a family is that we're going to come here, take some time off, uh, just take some vacation time, enjoy a little bit. And also we've got some really good connections through our businesses. Uh, here in in, uh, in Cartagena, which which was what part of the reason why we are here in the first place, um, really wanted to make that network and that connection again with them, and um, we have been pretty busy. Uh, either we have multiple meetings in a day or multiple meetings in a week and nonstop, and uh, trying to put together a, a curriculum that we uh, we are trying to work on. Uh, but it has been good. But today uh, it's going to be a wrap up on uh, going to talk a little bit about Cartagena, uh, what, I, what, what we have seen, some of the highlights that we have come across and on some of the things that you need to be aware of as if you are thinking of visiting here. Uh, Cartagena, number one, is a really beautiful country, uh, city. If you're going to come to Colombia, there's just a lot of richness in its culture. Uh, it is really a beautiful colonial city. So when you walk into the old city, into the wall city, as we, what they call it here, it is uh, it is amazing. The the architecture is just out of this wall, and and it's just uh, it, it talks it, it brings you a lot of history, and you get to learn a lot of the history that is in this place. How slavery came and how the Spanish came and how the gold was, was, uh, was stolen from uh, Colombia and taken back to, to the European countries. Uh, a lot of it in, by the French and English and the majority of by the Spaniards. But, uh, but coming out here, it is uh, beautiful as well because you got a richness of people that are here that they have been, uh, you know, there's a lot of investment that are coming in here. People are looking at, if you can see the city behind me, uh, that is that is a top-notch city. You've got a lot of tall buildings, a lot of investment that has been put into the city, a lot of money has been pumped into the city in order to grow for it to be like that. The buildings where it's located behind me is a place called Boca Grande. And Boca Grande used to be a really deserted fishing, fishing uh, part, town, part of Cartagena. The majority of it well, let me backtrack a little bit. Cartagena is made of the, the Boca Grande and you've got the Wall City and then you've got Manga, which is an island where a lot of middle class folks are, uh, are living. And then you've got a mainland where a lot of industries are going on. Uh, over to this side, you're going to see a lot of, uh, that is where the port is, a lot of uh, the containers, the shipping containers do come in here. And you will see a lot of uh, 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 big ships that comes through here. So there's a lot of investment that has come in here and you, you get to see the lifestyle changes uh, in this city between, uh, uh, between where, depending where you go visit, uh, you definitely see a different lifestyle. We are really fortunate enough to be living here for two months and we are not pressed for time. And uh, part of it is because we really want to get to know the people, the local culture. We really wanted to know how people live on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you and I know that you know as you travel as a tourist, uh, most of the time you just do the thing and touristy thing and uh, it's not really the, the real place, the real city or, or at least the custom and the culture of the city where you're visiting itself. Uh, we chose to live together with uh, uh, where the locals are and it was a really good and really memorable experience. Uh, one of the best things that we find is that we knew one person when we first came here to Cartagena. We know no one else at all. Uh, but out of this two months that we've been here, we've got this bunch of birds that's flying overhead right now. But uh, out of this two months that we've, we've been here, we have come to get to know and come to love a, a lot more people than we, we ever uh, could imagine. People that we have come to meet uh, in, you know, in, in a place that's uh, close by, in a gathering that's close by. Uh, we get to know them on a, a, a more of a personal level. We have been to their house, we have been to uh, gone out for meals and you really get to know them, how things are and, and stuff. So one of the main pro is definitely if you're coming here, if you're going to be staying, you're going to see a lot of colonial. You're going to see a fantastic, uh, uh, beautiful colonial and architecture here. Uh, the culture of the coast of Colombia is very different from the city and it's just rich. It's just a lot of history here and most of them all, you're going to meet Colombians. Uh, when people get together as Colombians, 
people will tend friendly. They are very warm people, they will take you in and they will literally uh, share their life with you and without any, any worry at all. So um, that's going to be some, one of the things that you're going to be looking forward to and, um, and as you visit in, in this place. So the thunderstorm was coming and it was just getting, uh, we were going to get, we got soaked. Uh, one of the things about living here in Cartagena is that you're going to get tropical storm, rain comes in the afternoon and it literally just floods uh, uh, the, the whole city. Uh, a lot of times you're going to have to look for shelter, try to run into a restaurant by like where we are right now and just to wait through the rain till it passes over. And the nice thing about it about here is that you can find restaurants anywhere and you can literally uh, find shelters, you can just hang out, it's pretty chill. Um, and, uh, and the nice thing about here is that you can just chill out anywhere you like uh, in, in different restaurants and you, you literally will find good food. So one of the things that I really want to do as well is to talk about some of the things that you need to be aware of in uh, Cartagena as you come and figure out and think about visiting. There are several places that you want to be aware of uh, how things are uh, when it comes to accommodation. There are lots of traffic. Uh, depending on where you live, if you're looking at Airbnb, you want to make sure that you're on a higher floor and not in a congested area. Uh, the place that we are living in right now is called uh, an island. It's an island off uh, Cartagena called Manga. It's, it's just a neighborhood island. It's small, really tiny, about two and a half miles around. And you can hear uh, cars honking. And we hear that all night long. And it was just a very specific intersection that we were on a specific road. Um, and you want to be very aware and check on Google Maps and you will be able to find where the ma major traffic is and uh, you want to avoid those places. Manga has a lot of quieter neighborhood, quieter blocks, and you could actually find a really good place to, to, uh, to live and visit while you're visiting here. Other places like Boca Grande, you're gonna find really good places as long as it's not on the main strip. Uh, I think that's on uh, Carrera Dos, uh, the, the second avenue or the fourth avenue. I'm not sure one, one, one of them, but it, it, again, check on the map, you'll see where the main traffic is. And that's where a lot of parties are going on, a lot of traffic uh, honking. It's constant honking, and you're gonna find that uh, happening uh, pretty much where the main, uh, main drag is. Now, but once you're off the main drag, you're gonna find a lot of forest in the neighborhood and all. As we, as we talk about traffic and all, uh, it is very important for you, and this is gonna be something that a lot of our friends here in Cartagena had told us uh, to be aware of as well, is that when you hail a taxi, tell the taxi driver where you're gonna go in general, but ask for the price. How much are they gonna charge you? They don't use meters here. So make sure that you guys agree on the price before uh, getting on a taxi. Nice thing about here is that they use Uber, which is illegal in the city of Cartagena. Uh, although it is legal uh, all over other parts of Colombia, but uh, it, as Uber, they, at least you can see your price and you can and, and you know what you're paying for. There's an app called InDriver uh, here in, uh, in Colombia that they developed, and it's a combination of using private cars like Ubers and taxis, the, the yellow taxis that you find all over around the place. And actually, once you get an idea how much uh, really cost, you can actually. Um, a bit for a price um, and it really depends on who wants to uh, wins a bit and they will pick you up so the nice thing about it is that they have in driver which is really, really good um, lastly is that I think one of the things that we struggle here is the lack of variety of food uh, I think that's that's gonna be it really depends on where you're coming from but uh, from a Malaysian perspective and an Asian perspective, we tend to look for vegetables and we tend to look for a variety of noodles and stuff. You're not gonna find that a lot here. Uh, you, they may call it Chinese food here, but it is not really Chinese food. It's, it's a mixture of it. And it's good. And I'm not, I'm not gonna lie about it. And some of them are really good, but just be prepared that it's not gonna be the flavor that you're looking for. Um, there is a restaurant that we found, and you, you may have seen it in my Instagram, Dami Ramen. Uh, they have, they, it, it is a Japanese uh, restaurant, ramen uh, noodles. It's, it's pretty good uh, for the center of, of here in Cartagena. But other than that, you're gonna find a, a lack of a variety. 
uh, uh, type of food uh, there there is. Uh, street food, you're gonna find a lot of it are fried. Uh, arepas, which I, I did in one of the videos in the beginning. Fried arepas, you're gonna have fried, fried bunuelo, you're gonna have fried pan de bono. There's a lot of fried stuff which is really easy to find anywhere. It's plentiful, you, can f you won't go hungry, let's put it that way. But if you're gonna be living here, like for, for us here, here for about two months, it does take a toll on your system and you want to make sure that you have some variety so be aware of it if you're going to be here you know if you're going to be here for a longer term um, there are uh, grocery stores all over around and you are able to you'll be able to find some variety of vegetables not a lot but at least with uh, some home cooked meal or some if you're getting an airbnb that's a kitchen available for you that's going to be something that uh, will really make a whole lot of difference in the diet. So anyways, these are our three wins for Cartagena and three uh, areas that you might want to really consider and to be aware of as you're going to be visiting. And we're going to be uh, closing our time here in Cartagena. We're going to be heading back real soon and uh, we'll be getting to another destination and uh, we'll keep you posted soon. Till then, I really wish you all the best and keep on following and click on the like button and hopefully you subscribe on my video. Thank you so much. You take care now.